Austin. Yeah. yeah. Debbie. It sounds good to catch up with her. Yeah, and she did a great job with this because it's not easy to talk about superstitions and keep your wits about you. You can get so scared <laughs> yeah. that you are just going to get off track. You might stop writing altogether, but she, sure. she plowed through she and came up with a great article from us that talks about why it's bad luck to spill salt. Because everybody knows it's bad luck to spill salt, but why? And then on top of that, have you ever noticed some people throw salt over their left shoulder when they spill it? I do. Um, why would we do that? Here's the thing. I know uh, that superstitions can be regional, and I'm not saying people in the South don't do this, but I've never seen anyone do this. I know it's a thing, I've heard of it, but I never did it. Uh, I don't, maybe I've never spilled salt, I don't know, but I've never known people who did it, so it just wasn't a popular thing for me. As, you know, like throwing it over now. Throwing it over your shoulder? Yeah, I've never seen anyone do this stuff. So, yeah, I do it every time. It's possible, though, that, it's, I guess I want to establish, you've known forever that spilling salt is bad luck at least, right? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I've heard about it and, like, seen it in movies, but it wasn't, it wasn't, like, a superstition that was prominent for me for some reason. Okay, but you had heard of it. Like, this isn't, like, news to you. No, no, no. It wasn't news. I was just like, who, who does this? And why is everyone spilling salt? <laughs> so, yeah, the thing about spilling salt and it being a superstition is it seems to be a really really old superstition that's been passed down through millennia, essentially, and is still around today, which is kind of funny, because I don't actually consider myself superstitious, but yet mm -hmm. I still throw salt over my left shoulder every time I spill it, and I spill now, what, a lot of salt. What does spilling salt mean? Like, you reach for the shaker and you tip it over by accident? I do it anytime the salt touches the counter or anything aside from the salt so like if you're shaking a little salt on food and some like jumps off onto the counter that you will that's considered spilling it? No, I don't actually know that you mentioned that. This is more I'll I'll grab a pinch out of the salt box and be salting stuff and if that uh -huh. gets messy, then yeah. Okay. It's almost like if I see it and notice it, then okay. I will I will throw it over my shoulder. Alright, I love it. I mean I'm certainly not I mean I'm the weirdo that steps on a crack with their left foot and has to step on a crack with their right foot. <laughs> So there's one thing we need to dispense with right out of the gate because there's the, it's a well-known fact that the, the the word salary is derived from salt, sal dare, which means give salt in I think Latin, mm -hmm. and that that is how Roman soldiers used to be paid. That is not entirely correct, but it doesn't seem to be fully a myth. Either Roman soldiers were partially paid in salt, like they got a salt ration every day, or right. part of their money, their pay, the actual coinage they were given, was was given to them to buy salt, in part to buy salt. Now, we did a great episode on salt, and I'm sure we talked about that. Do you remember what we said then? I think we said it was maybe even a myth altogether. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, but it's just, it's, it's ambiguous enough that you can't say it's fully a myth or it's fully true. Right, but the idea then, in terms of this episode, is because salt was valuable, that could be one of the reasons or one of the origins of it being bad luck because you've just essentially spilled some money. It's, yeah, exactly. That's that's the, the likeliest and widest held explanation for why spilling salt would be considered bad luck. All right, what else? Um, we can kind of fast forward a few years to Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. I think that was in the 16th century that he did that. And if you look very closely, when Judas Iscariot uh, has spilled the salt. I didn't ever notice that. I didn't either. But I haven't seen it that many times. I haven't either, now that I think about it. But uh, it was, you know, I grew up in the church, so it was a, a prominent painting. But if you if you mentioned Judas and salt in the same, same breath, they probably would have been like, yeah, Judas is terrible with salt, and that's why he was such a terrible person. All right, fair enough. Uh, that could be another, you know, religious connotation for the bad luck. Well, also, though, I thought this was pretty interesting. In Christianity, it's also seen as a, a symbol of holiness and purity, which is not just symbolic. It actually does keep food pure. It's one of the things that salt's always been used for is preservation. So I thought that was a pretty interesting uh, extension or expansion or extrapolation. Yeah, agreed. Uh, shall we take a break? Yeah.
All right, let's take a break. We'll talk about maybe some more background and why we throw it over our left shoulder. Right after this. Every week, we get to have that fluish feeling, and then the next morning, anyone could be alive and have a mutation in that gene. Before AI can help your data, mod Okay, Chuck, so um, there's been a lot of different myths about salt that spread out, which kind of makes sense because salt's been traded all over the world for a while, um, and it's been valuable, or it was valuable for a very long time. For example, in Slavic mythology, there's a, a well-trod story about a father who has three daughters, and he asks them how much they love him. And the first one says, I love you as much as diamonds. Mm -hmm. The second one says, I love you as much as gold. usually 